Kitchen waste and kitchen waste water has a great deal of fog associated with it. Fog is fat, oils, and grease. The wastewater from a kitchen should never be directly introduced to the, to the municipal wastewater, but should be contained before going out to the sewer. That containment is through a grease trap or a grease interceptor. Grease traps and grease interceptors allow for that grease waste, that fog, to be cleaned and not enter the municipal wastewater system. A grease trap is a small basin typically located in a kitchen under either the kitchen sink or next to the kitchen sink. It's a small basin for a very small amount of capacity. This basin is easily opened for cleaning by either the staff or some other person. And it typically just involves removing the lid and accessing what is inside. Grease interceptors, unlike grease traps, are located outside. These are typically larger basins, sometimes thousands of gallons in size, and are found in larger institutions like larger kitchens, hospitals, grocery stores, and warehouses. These involve a, an excavation of a trench, a concrete footing placed in the bottom of the trench, the basin placed in on top of the footing, and then backfilled. Then there's usually an extension collar that marries the top of the lid to the basin itself, sometimes as much as 30 inches. These and the cleaning of these involves a special waste hauler and equipment to suck out these tanks versus a grease trap, which only involves kitchen staff. Both of the systems, grease traps and grease interceptors, work in a similar manner. They have a series of baffles where the wastewater from the kitchen enters into the tanks, accumulates, the fog is allowed to settle slowly and rises up to the top of the tank where the cleaner water settles to the bottom. In either system, the water is allowed to evacuate out the bottom while the fog or the, or, or the grease contaminants go up to the top on a grease trap you open up the lid, you can clean it out uh, with any measures you want. Usually the grounded person does that or the person that's most in trouble in the, in the kitchen staff. And in the grease interceptor, a special waste hauler comes in, opens up the tanks, and then draws out all of the grease and puts it in their tank and hauls it away. 6.5.13 of the COMSOP states, an inspector is not required to inspect grease removal devices. Within grease removal devices, you will find grease traps and grease interceptors, which again, are both part of a commercial kitchen. Should you wanna go beyond the COMSOP and provide a visual analysis or inspection of these devices, an inspector could look at the lid of a grease trap and make sure that it is secured and the trap is physically not leaking onto the ground. If you're looking at a grease interceptor, which again is typically outside of the building, an inspector could look at the lid and the ground around the grease interceptor. By looking at the ground around the grease interceptor, we're verifying that the tank is not causing any disruption to the soil or to the hardscapes like the parking lot that might be above it. In this case, we are going to be looking at a grease interceptor on this video, and we are going to look at some of the things if you want to go beyond the COMSOP of some visual clues that you will see on grease interceptors. While looking at grease interceptors, it's very important on any system that we look at, especially on a system that may or may not be part of the COMSOP, take a really good inventory. In most, ins in most instances, most inspectors use their inventory as photographic evidence. So taking a bunch of pictures of what's present on, a, on the building is important. That would include photos of a grease trap, 
that's located under a sink, or that would be photos in this case of the grease interceptor that's located here outside. In some cases, it can be difficult to determine where the grease, grease interceptor is, but not in this case, because in this case, they wrote it down for us. And so when I'm doing my inventory of this grease interceptor, I'm gonna take a picture of this lid, and I'm gonna take a picture of the other lid on the other side of the tank, and I'm basically looking for any cracks or any damage. This is a cast iron lid. This is ostensibly like a manhole, but what we have is the tank underneath here. A, a special waste hauler would take this tank off, open up the lid, place in their vacuum, and draw it out. But my inspection is going to be as simple as what we're talking about now. I'm gonna take a picture of this, take a picture of that, look at this concrete, if I saw a bunch of cracking, uh, other than the typical concrete cracks, if I saw dips and bellies, then that would give me an indication that we might have an issue with the grease interceptor tank. But in this case, this lid and that lid both look great, and I don't see any unusual cracking. As a professional property inspector, specializing in commercial inspections, you're gonna find that not every one of your clients is as much of an expert as the property they're, they're buying as you would like to think they are. And some people buying a commercial property like this one with a commercial kitchen might not know that it requires a special waste hauler or somebody else to clean a grease interceptor or even what a grease interceptor and a grease trap does. And some inspectors might wanna have a specialty consultant in their pocket that they could refer to their clients to help them understand these very important systems present in a commercial kitchen.